New York City has the largest transit system across the country. Pretty soon, the MTA will have not one, but two new people running Absolutely. it. Absolutely, and one of those people is making history as the first woman to ever be nominated to serve as the MTA chairperson. We're talking about Sarah Feinberg, and she joins us live in studio to talk about this new role. Good morning. Good morning. It's so nice morning. to be here I in know. studio. Good to be sitting next to <laughs> yes. you, right? Exactly. Exactly. We want to talk about this nomination because it is historic, but before we get to that, we've got Elsa yep. on the rise, headed yep. our way. Um, how's the MTA? MTA preparing for that? So we're taking all of the steps that we would normally take for any really big storm like this. We've been preparing for days, we've been prepping, um, you know, we're doing you know, conference calls every 12 hours or so to make sure that we're ready. Uh, fingers crossed, you know, it will be at least short in duration, mm -hmm. should move in and out pretty quickly, but you know, I'm not, I'm not the weather expert, I depend on Byron and others for <laughs> that. Uh, but tomorrow morning's commute is probably going to be a little tough. Yeah. So, you know, it's okay. a good morning to, you know, decide you're going to take a long weekend, stay home. <laughs> Obviously, if you are going to be out, use mass transit, but keep your eye on the weather and, and hopefully uh, it'll yeah. all be through by the afternoon. Yeah, I think the beauty of the pandemic, too, that we learned that a lot of people can work from home yeah, as yes, well. Exactly. That's the one thing that we came out of it. We want you back, but, exactly. but tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow morning is we'll an We'll make an exception. Day, right? um, <laughs> so congratulations, by the way, yeah, on the nomination. Uh, Governor Cuomo nominated you about a month ago. Yeah. So what are the next steps now for you to become the first female MTA chairperson? Well, obviously, what an honor uh, to be the first woman nominated. And uh, now the New York Senate uh, will make a determination, and, and uh, I think we all trust them to to uh, to you know consider the nomination and then to act at some point. So it's it, the ball's in their court. Yeah. So the MTA is going to look a little bit different, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about the governor saying splitting the roles. What would that look like? Well, it's going to look a little bit different from it from the way it looks currently. Right. But but we've done this in the past, and it's a really a pretty traditional splitting of the roles. So many Fortune 500 companies obviously split the roles of CEO and board mm -hmm. chair. Uh, all of the other transit agencies in the state do that, and in fact, um, I think all of the other transit agencies in the country actually oh. do that. So we're we're sort of unique that we don't do that right. currently. Uh, look, my uh, my philosophy is this is a really big job, yeah. largest transit agency yeah. in North America, two commuter railroads, bridges and tunnels. We've got a massive record-breaking capital plan. We've got congestion pricing. We've got <laughs> we've got ridership issues, a financial crisis. We got to bring people back. I mean, this is a job for you know for as many good, smart folks as we can find. Right? So, that, how do you, what would your responsibilities be as the chairperson versus what the CEO will be, which could possibly be a general lever? Absolutely. So, first of all, Giano and I, close friends, great colleagues, and I think it'll be a great partnership, and we're looking forward to it. Traditional, traditional separation of duties. So, look, the board um, needs to make big decisions, mm -hmm. fair policy decisions, really big decisions about the direction of the agency, the future, congestion pricing, where are we going, what are we doing next, how should this place be run? And, and Jano is going to be, you know, executing on the day-to-day -day management of mm -hmm. the agency, which, by the way, 72,000 people, several different departments, huge, right? Yeah. And then there's a capital program on top of it. But again, these are huge responsibilities. And um, look, I'm excited to get started if the Senate decides that's the way to go. Right. So if you are approved, what is this going to be like for you? Because you've been in the interim position. Mm -hmm. Clearly, you know the ins and outs of it. I mean, is this something that you've always wanted to do? This has got to be pretty exciting for you. It, it, look, it's absolutely exciting. Look, the, the transit president job is very different from the yeah. MTA board chair job, right? So right now, I'm in the thick of a 52,000 person organization, you know, managing the day to day, mm -hmm. you know, worrying about two rush hours, you know, five days a week, um, constantly keeping my eye on, you know, what's happening in the system. Uh, and the board chair is very different. It's bigger picture, it's mm -hmm. messaging, it's working with Washington, it's working with the Cong our partners in Washington. It's you know steering this dynamic board that can really have a huge impact on the future of the agency. And so it's very different, but I'm really looking forward to it. Good, so let's talk about some of the inner workings of transit right now as people try to get back to work, right? Yeah. So I don't know if we're talking to you in the role of interim president or what you hope to accomplish <laughs> as chairperson. How about president of transit? Okay, yeah, let's, okay. let's do that. Who so, you are right, right now. Right, right, exactly. So people are going back to work, but there has been this idea that there's a staff shortage in yes. terms of getting some trains back up and running to full schedules. Yep. What is being done to address it? So we are hiring and bringing on folks and training them as quickly and efficiently as we can, obviously keeping safety in mind. We're not going to short circuit any training mm -hmm. or short circuit any training uh, 
uh, classes. Um, so look, this is something that every transit agency goes through when they go through a hiring freeze. It's why it's the absolute last thing that you ever want to yeah. do yeah. as someone in my position is to stop hiring because you're always going to be attriting people. You're always going to have people who are retiring, going on to other things. If you don't have people to take their spots, you're going to be digging out for a really long time. We've mm -hmm. seen this happen at other transit agencies. I don't want to sugarcoat it. I'm, I'm very transparent about this. Yeah. This is a big problem. It's really tough to dig out of. We have seen it coming, obviously. We knew that it was going to be hard mm -hmm. to dig out of, so we've been taking steps for a long time to expand mm -hmm. class size. You know, with the lifting of the COVID restrictions, the more people who get vaccines, the bigger our training classes can be. So mm -hmm. that is all working right. for us, right? But, uh, but any transit agency will tell you this is tough. But the reason you end up in this place is because you avoid furloughs and layoffs, mm -hmm. which, you know, mm -hmm. obviously we were, th we were thrilled to do and grateful right. that we were able to do. All right, we just have a little bit of time left. I, I want to talk about yesterday. We saw you at the Hometown Heroes oh Parade gosh. on that historic subway car. Yeah. It must have been great to be out there. And I want to get your view on this because we're celebrating this comeback. But at the same time, you guys lost, what, 136 employees due to COVID in this pandemic. So you had to balance a little bit of that. No, it was an extremely emotional day. Mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, to see the city come out and those throngs of people lining Broadway screaming thank you. It was unbelievably emotional. I mean, you know, I, I did an interview yesterday and burst into tears unexpectedly. It's just, yeah. it was incredibly emotional. And, and our colleagues who we lost were at the forefront of our mind the whole time. And there were people, you know, lining the streets, holding up names of some of the folks that we mm -hmm. lost during yeah. the pandemic. So it was it was really touching. It was, it was certainly yeah. a range of emotion. Just yeah. so we're out of time here. Masks moving forward for how long? On the subway on system, subways. Not on subways and buses, got to keep wearing those masks. It's a, it's a close environment. You know, enjoy your freedom outside. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your freedom in other places, restaurants and places, but but keep them on in the subway and bus so you protect everybody. All right. Well, congratulations again on the nomination. Great to see you here in Great person. Great to see you. Thank yes. you. Great to you see know, you. I always asked you about dropping that interim title. You did. You avoided <laughs> that, but now you've got a new position. All right. Good to see you. Good to see you.